Uh, welcome everyone and thank you for joining today's BSI webinar. This session will give you a 30 to 45 minute overview of the exciting tool Action Manager and what it can do for your organization, specifically around the transition and beyond. Uh, allow me a couple of housekeeping matters before we begin though. Uh, please note that all participants, apart from the presenters, are muted for today's call. If you do have any questions during the presentation, and of course we hope you will have plenty, uh, please type them in the chat box window and we will do our best to answer them in real time or do, during the planned Q&A session at the end. So again, please do not hesitate to send them over. Uh, now let me introduce today's main speaker. Amory Ford is our Client Services Analyst for BSI's Action Manager and Entropy Software. Her background includes extensive knowledge of standards, technology, and client services. Amory is responsible for implementing, supporting, and overseeing the successful deployment of Action Manager for clients as well as providing analysis and support to the entire Entropy team. And my name is Tricia Bruns. I am your moderator and the product marketing manager here at BSI. So today, just a brief agenda, we will discuss, um, of course, an overview of who BSI is. Uh, we'll talk about the transition to excellence and the key changes to the ISO revision, or to ISO. Uh, we'll talk about the BSI compliance solutions and our, tool, excuse me, and our tools. Uh, then, of course, we move into the demonstration with an introduction to Action Manager. We come out of the demonstration and we talk about timelines, and then of course we close with the Q&A. So for those who may not know us, uh, we are the number one standards creation body in the world and the UK national standards body. So we are the source of British standards. We were a founding member of ISO and shaped the world's most adopted standards. Many within BSI sit on the technical committees that shape the new standards, including the revisions for ISO 9001, 14001, and OSAS 18001. And as a matter of fact, we're developing the international standard for health and safety, which we believe is going to be ISO 45001, and that is likely expected in 2016. But we don't just create standards, right? We support our clients with the provision of related services such as training, assessment, and associated business improvement tools to help them embed these standards into the way they run their businesses. We've been around a long time and we've seen the role of standards evolve over the years through three generations, as a matter of fact, from the time when they were product focused and all about delivering consistency and specification through the development of process-focused standards designed to help a business function more effectively, and more recently into business potential standards, where corporate culture and behavior are changing to support businesses in delivering continual improvement. It's this drive to ensure standards remain relevant to the changing needs of business that leads to the necessary revisions and the subject of this event today. So before we move forward, we thought it might be fun to ask a question of the uh, participants here to see what area of the revised ISO 9001 standard, and quite honestly, this can move into probably the 14001 standard, of course, um, because they all are now uh, the same through this Annex SL structure, but we won't discuss that today. So these points will be the same in 14001. But what area of the revised standard are you most concerned about? whether you're not concerned at all. Um, of course, risk now begins to play a part. Leadership, context of your organization, perhaps it's the moving from a procedure to a process approach, the documented information, or maybe it's all of the above. I was hoping you folks could take a moment to share their thoughts. Numbers are rising. Let's see. All right. All right, we'll go ahead and close it out. Thank you for those. Just something fun to see. So, uh, <laughs> things continue to change as people continue to register their vote. Um, 
Well, then I'm glad everyone has joined because it looks like 50% of the audience um, are concerned about all of it. And uh, what we have found is that, yes, risk is probably another piece of that pie that seems to leave many to wonder. So we'll move on to the next, and that really is what we call the transition to excellence, right? Um, so with all of that in mind, what do these key changes in the revised version, um, I say ISO 9001, but again, equally ISO 14001, say for the obvious environmental performance spin, what do they look like? Um, well, I've identified five key areas, which obviously I've given you a little bit of a cheat view into that with the poll prior to it, um, that I believe will have a significant impact. Uh, one thing we observe from many of our clients is that standards perform better when they are aligned to the business strategies of an organization. And therefore, the role of top management in their deployment is key. This is the first major change in the new standard, right? Greater emphasis on the objectives and goal setting to ensure the new standard puts leadership at the center of its thinking. Secondly, it's about managing change in your business, understanding the risks and also the opportunities, really, that come out of those risks. It's not just negative. There are positive risks and opportunities that you can get from that, which may impact your organization's ability to meet customer requirements and taking a preventative approach. Thirdly, the context of the organization is now common to all new ISO standards. Uh, it sets out that the organization really must identify all internal and external interested parties in relation to the management system. Uh, there is an increased emphasis on achieving value for the organization and its customers, which help to align quality with the strategic direction of the organization. There is also a new focus of using a process approach rather than the procedures. And this ensures the integration and alignment of processes to achieve their desired outcomes, which improves the effectiveness and efficiency of an organization. And finally, documented information, which replaces you know, the quote unquote documents and, and records which allows for greater flexibility. So these are significant changes and all of these points points will be, um, will mean raising the profile of your management system in the boardroom of your organization. You know, with BSI's experience and um, our over quarter million audits over the past few years, you know, we have noticed though some common challenges when it comes to action tracking and moving tasks or actions to closure, which are important. And I've put them into a quadrant form here. I'll start with administration. And that's a lot of time and effort is being dealt with administration on a day-to-day -day basis as, to, um, as opposed to driving real business improvements. And this is often due to action tracking by Excel spreadsheets or manually chasing people. I move to inefficient processes, similar to the previous point, of course, but with Maybe those added frustrations of um, a severe inability to understand the root cause of an issue, and therefore you're not able to spot those trends over time, and history ends up repeating itself. A lack of visibility, and this can be across department, location, country, or globe. Uh, what actions are being taken? What actions have been closed out in a timely manner? Which individuals have not addressed their actions? Again, all of this is a common theme when using manual-based systems. And finally, deadlines are being missed. And this can have a significant impact on the organization depending upon which area of the business the action or task arose from. All right, we're going to involve the audience one more time. And we're going to ask you if you wouldn't mind sharing with us, you know, how do you plan to manage your own transition to these new standards? Um, is it by these manual processes, the forms and the spreadsheets? And I'm hoping that with you coming in today, you're here to learn about some other opportunities that may be out there. Um, maybe it's by SharePoint. Now you have a shared system that you all use and you pull documents from it. And see how that efficiency works. And then maybe some of you already do have some kind of third party software that you've put into your organization. So maybe sometimes that software may need to have a little more of a robust feel to it. So again, I'll let 
numbers rise as we go through. Thank you very much. I think this is fun to see, and I think it allows the audience to see who they're joining. All right, we'll go ahead and show the results, and they'll continue to climb as people register their vote. But again, this is not unusual to us when we are um, talking with our customers and um, actually speaks to why BSI uh, created Action Manager and our entropy software system. So again, more than half of you are dealing with these manual processes, but even still, you know, a good percentage are working in SharePoint, but what we're finding is SharePoint can become um, very inefficient and cumbersome to many organizations. Uh, and then there are a few of you who are using a third-party software, and so that's fantastic, but um, we're glad you have joined us to see what opportunities BSI and Action Manager can certainly um, move you towards as you transition. So really fundamentally, Action Manager has been designed, as mentioned, to help organizations improve their businesses and build operational excellence. Right? So this, it provides a functionality to drive effective management of all discovered nonconformances or other finding types for that matter. And it does enable this comprehensive planning with features that align to your corrective action and task management process. So with this new emphasis, as mentioned prior, on leadership really comes accountability. Right? So Action Manager provides a tool to help you break down those silos and disparate views of information. It gives all users, including the executive suite, um, one view across the organization. So as you transition, right, the findings and results from perhaps a gap assessment that you may hold, or even your own internal audits, really, can be moved into and managed by this tool, allowing you the most efficient process. So when you consider that an ineffective management system can cost you a lot of time and money, Action Manager is really a cost-effective way to perform analysis, identify trends, and reduce those issues and rework some mistakes. Um, we put up here a few of the key areas that we think are going to be you know, real supportive in your transition process. Right? I talked about the visibility. I talked about the accountability. I know Anne Marie is going to go in and probably uh, show you some of the uh, notifications and the way the deadlines work. It's all built on process. Action Manager is built on a workflow process uh, base. Uh, tasks, it's exactly what Action Manager is. It is a task management, action management tool um, for anything coming out of internal meetings, management reviews, even you know, your own supplier audits. And then of course, you know, what it was born to be, a corrective action tool. So your transition to um, whether it's ISO 9001, 2015, which we, fingers crossed, we believe it's coming out tomorrow, or if it's already the ISO 14001 that came out, I think, last week or two ago, it's all about timeliness and readiness, which, um, as I've been saying, are predicated on these tasks and actions. So Action Manager from BSI can help your organization prepare, track progress, gain visibility, and manage performance from the current ISO 9001-2008 version to the new standard. It can help you inject visibility into operations with real-time data on actions and tasks, achieve faster closeout of activities with automated workflows associated to your organizational context. You can track the responsibility and accountability of actions against an overall transition plan and timeline which then helps your management system become more effective and compliant with the ISO requirements. So the revised standard really does recognize the value of technology and how digital tools can facilitate providing the quote unquote documented information that proves effectiveness as well as supporting the quote unquote process approach to your quality management system. So really now is the time to adopt technology to help automate these tedious and manual processes. And so with that, I want to turn it over to my colleague, Anne-Marie Ford, and we'll go ahead and start the demonstration of Action Manager. Thank you. 
I'll go ahead and share my screen with everyone. I'm actually logged into a Action Manager instance that I've created. And the first thing that you see when you log into the system uh, is always going to be your dashboard. And so this is just an example of a dashboard I, I threw together for, for this conversation today. Um, and the great thing about dashboards is they are customizable. And so you can set default dashboards based off of um, maybe your role, uh, leadership, location, department, and really um, trigger the, the information that you are seeing as soon as you log in. And so in this instance, I am I'm presenting to you a dashboard that maybe you would have for, for upward management, senior management, or, or um, high level management group. So I'm going to see, um, excuse me, I'm going to see a, a report here. Uh, this is going to give me some details about the status of the various actions that I have in the system. Uh, I've actually applied some filters to this, so I'm looking at maybe just my location or my responsible departments. Um, I can see what's completed, what's active, what's overdue. I can drive down for a little bit more detail, a little bit more granularity um, for each specific action that I have in the system. And this just gives me a quick snapshot of um, what's you know active, what's overdue. Similar to this list over here, as Trisha mentioned before, tasks are, are going to be highly important in the new transition, excuse me, the new ISO standard. And so this listing over here, I've customized it to list all the actions that are I'm responsible as a senior management for my entire organization and include who is responsible. Um, so that way I can tell that um, you know, this action is currently past due and I know who to contact um, to, to follow up with this action. The great thing about this, these overdue um, pieces is, again, Tricia mentioned earlier, was the, the deadlines and escalations and notifications. Action Manager has um, pre-configured notifications in the system and the ability to, um, to add specific details and specific escalations. And so I can actually come into the system and create an escalation saying that after you know, seven days past um, the due date of, of an action or a task, uh, notify senior management, and I can escalate it further and further depending on, on the level of um, detail that I want to, to drive. And again, that ties into the leadership and that ties into accountability. And uh, leadership is Clause 5 of the new standard, and, and it really talks about the top management needs to demonstrate their involvement and their engagement with the quality management system, which is exactly what Action Manager is. And so their role really needs to be to support management. And so escalated notifications for past year actions, um, even unresolved findings, um, things with high priority, that type of thing. It's really going to drive accountability. And to the point of the notifications, uh, Action Manager also has a notification log. And so it's really easy to show an assessor or anybody down the road, not only are we escalating uh, and we have notifications going out, but I can prove to you that they were sent out to these individuals. Uh, so that's really helpful as well. Um, a couple other things here on this uh, dashboard that we're looking at. Um, so not only do I have the status of my actions and, and the tasks of the whole organization, I can also detail my specific tasks. So if I was a manager and I had to approve some things um, that would be listed here, I can always go to my little red box that has my tasks, um, and this is going to be constant throughout the system. I can always just click here to go uh, take care of what items are assigned to me and, and clean this list up. Um, and then another feature that I have that I find is, is really useful is to be able to click on, on recent records. Um, and this just allows me to quickly go back to the items that I was working on last without having to search through things. And, and as you start to develop the system and there's a lot of information in the system, this becomes a really useful tool. So I'm just going to drive in here a little bit more. I'm going to show you an example uh, of an internal audit. Uh, this is a, a finding from an audit that I you know, quote unquote did. Um, and again, this is just some, some general information that I added. Um, but it's really helpful to be able to have a description that's going to include maybe some details about the audit itself, maybe some specific details about the nonconformance or the opportunity uh, that you found during the audit. If there's any action that I want to derive from this nonconformance, I can provide direction here under action required to whoever I'm going to be assigning the action to. Um, facts and causes. I know a lot of folks that I'm working with are using um, 5Y analysis, or maybe it's a fishbone, Ishikawa, uh, the 8Ds. We can just think this is a standard text box with custom formatting. I can build this out however I'd like. 
Um, and I can also attach files. And so in this instance, I've actually created and completed an, uh, maybe an Ishikawa or some kind of root cause analysis. And I can actually just upload it here. So if your organization has a template that it typically works with, um, you can list it here. Just complete the form and upload it. And then it's, it's uh, readily available to anybody looking at, uh, at this record. And another key point I want to point out here is your causes. Some people will list this as causes or contributing factors. Uh, and this really just allows me to um, drive trend analysis and, and identify what it is that, uh, that's causing some of the, the issues that we're having and see if there's any kind of um, relation between my findings and my nonconformities, maybe across locations, across departments. And it's really easy to add different things here. So for example, I'm going to add training. Maybe the lack of training, inadequate training, etc. Um, and this is just going to allow me to report against these things, so I can start again, really just driving home that, that trend analysis. One other thing I want to point out while I'm in this system, um, one of the big things here that we're talking about, uh, excuse me, with a new transition is context. And context really helps to ensure that the management system is designed and suitably adapted um, for your specific organization. So. We can include things as you see here as suppliers. I can include clients. Um, some folks include in their categories. They'll actually have a listing of their products. Maybe you want to report against your products. Um, and it's really the, the concept here is, is context. Anything that you put in the system, you can now pull out of the system. Um, and I would say that the biggest, the biggest perk to using a system, an automated system uh, or technology, is just the efficiency for running reports and things like that. And so. You know, a really quick thing here. So for example, maybe I'm going to, I want to add my management group. And so I want to include all of my um, senior management that I, I want them to be attached to this. And, and now it's really easy to add them or really easy to take them off just like that. Um, and again, it's just about transparency and accountability and, and ensuring that um, all the information is out there. And so this, this system, this information that we have on this right-hand side, I reference it as metadata. Some others reference it as organizational data. Um, and it's really helpful uh, as it relates to this, the new ISO standard, particularly down here once we get into owner and responsible and, and other areas we can, um, we can add approver or acceptor. And this ties into the management representation piece. And it's just a showing um, that you assigned it to the appropriate personnel. It could be by role or title, department, location, etc. Uh, and so again, that, that directly um, relates to, to the context and, and Clause 4. Um, the other great thing about this system is that not only can I drive a, a finding, um, but from that finding I can drive a, a corrective action or any kind of action. And so in this instance I actually have uh, an action linked here. And so I'll show you by clicking up on this extended view, I can um, actually show, I can actually export a report, a very detailed report about just this nonconformance. So um, and this is going to include all the details from the, the nonconformance itself. And then it will also include the linked actions or um, linked uh, records. So if it was a uh, corrective action, if it was a preventive action, if it was a recurring action, etc., I can just tie all that in here. And again, all the details associated with that will be here, as well as any um, files and attachments that I included to either record. I can quickly click on that here to, to add it. And just like our reports, we can actually export this. And across the system, all of our exports are available uh, through PDF, through Excel, and through Microsoft Word. So I'm going to show you an example of an actual report. So I, I talked a little bit about um, some of this context within the system, but let's look at, at our reports specifically. And so while we're going through these, um, you know, I know most of, our, most of the topics that we have today, leadership, context, document information, process risk, um, most of those have to do with a very specific clause. Risk itself actually has to do with a number of clauses. Um, and, and the action manager really is a risk-based uh, management tool. And, and the risk-based approach really just incorporates much of what used to be known in the previous um, 2008 version as preventive action. Um, and so if you're familiar with preventive action, you'll be just fine moving over to this risk-based approach. And it's really just identifying gaps um, and, and figuring out ways to, to improve those gaps and close those gaps to be more efficient and more effective. And reporting is a great way to show 
um, that change. And so maybe historically, you know, in January I was really high with a certain nonconformance, etc. Uh, and now I, as I look at my reports over the, the past fiscal year, I'm seeing that this has changed. So I can come in here and I can uh, you know, maybe come into a finding summary report. Again, all these reports are pre-populated in the system. Um, but they're all configurable. And so in this example, I have different grouping options. I have different filter options. Um, and so I can come in here and get really specific as to what I want to see. I, again, my causes that I referenced earlier is in here. Maybe I only want to look at training, um, excuse me, training findings and, and anything that had to do with inadequate training. I can easily pull a report based off of that. Um, if I wanted to get really specific and I only wanted to look at ISO standards, excuse me, um, I can look for a specific standard, maybe just 9001-2008. Maybe I want to move up to the 2015 one, and I only want to look at what was referenced or what references uh, that particular category. I can do that as well. And again, talking about the the, um, the accountability, I can start looking things up by owner, by who's responsible for the the finding themselves, and kind of drive uh, report analysis and, and trend analysis that way. And what's great about this system is. Uh, what I can do is once I go through and click all these buttons and I add all these specific things that I want to look at, instead of doing that each time, I can just do a Save As, and now I have some of my saved reports. And so in this example, I have, um, for example, my BSI audit actions. I was really specific at what I wanted to look at here. And if I click Run, it's going to pull up a report. And what's great about our reports is that we have uh, visual representation as well as um, some more detail. So in this example, let me scroll down a little bit so you can see this. Um, this is going to show me, there's, oh, I guess I need to, <laughs> excuse me, I'm only showing you rejected ones right now. Let's look at, let's look at all of them. Meeting acceptance. This is going to show me a detailed analysis of all the actions that I have in the system. Um, and it kind of gives me a breakdown. And again, I can, just like the, previously, I can expand it to look a little bit more into it. Um, and so you'll see the, the visual representation on our system can be dials, it may be pie charts, or bar charts, or line charts, etc. And so the great thing about this is this BSI action status, whereas before what I was showing you was internal, so you actually went out and performed an audit within your system itself, um, BSI action status and, and BSI findings um, are as a result of BSI being your certification body and coming on site and doing an assessment. And so I'm going to go in here and show you a little bit more about this. And this is, again, this is just fake data that I put in the system. But imagine um, somebody came on site and, and actually assessed you and did, performed an audit against ISO 9001-2015, and some nonconformities uh, were generated. Typically what happens is they'll send you an e-report, uh, and then you start managing the process through, um, through email. In this instance, you can actually just manage it all through Action Manager. So it's full transparency, again, to upper management, to the entire organization. Everybody can see what's going on. And it really protects for, with business continuity because nothing's lost due to you know, people being on PTO maybe, or somebody was promoted and didn't, didn't add details, or emails were lost, or turnover, etc. And this way, everything that you need to know is already in the system and is easily managed for the next person. The other great thing about that is because it is all in the system here, um, you can easily show this in the future. So this ties back into document information, Clause 7.5, where we're, we can easily show um, information to the next auditor that comes on site. And so the document in, in, information, it really, that replaces what used to be known as um, I believe it's document and procedure and, and records. And so now it's a little bit more flexible and it allows the organization to, to determine its own uh, what's appropriate for it itself instead of following a prescriptive format. So whereas before I think it was really specific to, to manufacturing or et cetera, now it's it's general services and goods. And so it's really up to you to kind of um, drive that. And one of the great things about that is you can excuse me. Come on. Oh, this is a excuse me. You can actually, um, just like I showed you before with the attached documents, you can attach documents here under your BSI actions and BSI nonconformance as well. Um, and so then during the next audit that pops up, you can easily and quickly go into the record and pull up the information that, that was required uh, to show. 
And just like before, this is also going to show you the link between your um, nonconformance and your action. And so if I do ex an expanded view here, it will pop up and show you all the details included um, both in the finding and in, in the corrective action. Um, so here's just a, a screenshot. And again, I can export it, and I can click on the links to drive um, back and forth between the, the areas that I want to, to review further. The one big difference I, I will point out about the internal findings and actions versus the external, i.e. BSI, um, all the information that's listed here is going to come from your audit itself. And so the information that the auditor puts into the system, for example, this is the associated action, all this information, the description, the requirements, objective evidence, this all comes from the e-report and is all information the assessor puts into the system. Uh, and it just literally pops right over into your system. So you don't have to dig through files. You don't have to read through stuff. Uh, it's all any of the relevant information for this specific issue is all detailed here. And so it's really helpful for individuals responsible for identifying or um, correcting this nonconformance in, in the associated action. Excuse me, just a second. Okay, so that's going to talk um, about the documented information. We talked about um, risk, leadership, etc. One other thing that I want to point out, which is um, pretty helpful, and a lot of the clients that I have are using the system this way, is um, the fact that we can have additional action. So it doesn't have to come from uh, an audit, internal or external. I can literally just drive actions. I can create recurring actions, and I can even create action plans. Um, and so for example, I'm going to show you an action plan. And, and this action plan is just a grouping of various uh, standalone actions or recurring actions. And maybe, maybe you have a specific project. So maybe, for example, you are creating a, a committee to manage the, the new transition uh, to the ISO standard for 2015. And so in this, this action plan here, I have uh, standalone actions. Maybe it's you know, research transition changes. Maybe it's attend a, a really awesome webinar. Um, and we also have uh, uh, references here. And so for example, I can include meeting minutes. Um, I can include specific information within this instance, say um, a project scope if it's another project unrelated to what we're talking about today. Uh, if you're managing client projects, you can have client information or scope of services, project timelines, etc. And then again, as I mentioned, um, not only do we have standalone actions, we also have recurring actions. And so in this example, let's, let's dive into um, a project scrum update. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to an individual. I'm going to set a recurrence. In this case, it's going to be weekly. So every Friday I want this individual to up, you know, meet with the team and provide an update. And again, I can have references here. So this ties back into that document information, accountability, leadership can look here. Leadership can provide information back down uh, through the system. So I can have scopes, timelines. There's really no limit here uh, as far as adding files um, or the type of file. So I can add images. I can add Excel files. I can add PowerPoint presentations or Word documents, PDFs, etc. And what you're going to see here um, is a list. So in this case, I've actually created a recurring action, and this is going to trigger an action. So if I was responsible for this, I would have a task up here um, where I'm supposed to you know, have a project scrum update with the team on Friday at, at 3 p.m. And so each week, a new recurrent action um, is, is created and, and is assigned to me. And so if I dive into one of these, in this case, this is, this is a completed action. Now I can go even more granular, and I can provide um, attachments and documentation for this specifically. So maybe I want to include the PowerPoint presentation, the meeting minutes. Maybe somebody wasn't available to attend. I can direct them here to, to pull the information that's needed. Um, include any notes. Maybe instead of including meeting minutes here, I just want to include meeting minutes here in my notes. Uh, the section there, that, that's uh, a helpful tool as well. And so this really shows you, um, you know, this isn't just about the corrective action process. And, and mostly what Action Manager was originally designed for was you know, a plan, do, check, act. Um, and it was very much around risk-based approach and, and managing gaps and, and doing trend analysis and reporting. Um, and it's really just become this, this excellent tool that it can be applied across your organization from quality management systems to EHNS to you know, 
project management and task management. We use it internally to, to manage our own things here. So um, you know, there's definitely a lot of options for you. But really at the end of the day, this is about process. And, and one of the changes this, this year with the new transition um, was we're not, we don't have a quality manual requirement anymore. And that's been replaced with um, Clause 4.4, I believe, which is quality systems and its processes. And so that's really just um, you need to identify your inputs, your outputs, your sequence, and your interaction. Uh, and it's really easy to do all of that through Action Manager. So you know, what are you going to include? Do you want audits? Do you want customer complaints? Do you want supplier relations? Um, do you want to include project management? Do you want to only include um, you know, environmental or, or quality issues? And then what reports are you going to generate? Who are those reports going to go to? Who are your users going to be? Um, you know, that, that type of thing. Your sequence is, is going to be your actions to your findings and, and vice versa and that type of thing. And so um, you know, this is a quick, easy tool to really manage um, not only the ISO 9001-2015 transition, but uh, daily operations within your, your organization. So I have a habit of talking fast, and presumably I'm sure I skipped over some things that somebody might have a question about or uh, want me to dive a little bit deeper into it. So Trisha, I don't know if you want me to give you the, the you know, I'll give you the controls back. Maybe we can just open it up to some, some Q&A. Um, I'm I happy to. Anne Marie, actually, and you mentioned a little bit about it. You started to talk about the customer complaints, but there was a question about you know, how or if customer feedback could be incorporated. And so I didn't sure. know if, um, if you could talk a little bit about how, you know, we talk a lot about the actions and the recurring actions and things, but how, do cost, how can customer feedback factor into that and how can we show that? that that's a great question. And ISO 9000 really talks about um, customer satisfaction. It's one of the, the core pieces of it. So that's, that's a great question. I'm glad somebody asked. Um, now, my system is a little bit different. I, I've tinkered with this quite a bit. I've actually changed, um, I believe it was, Recommend or best practice to complaint form here, and I've, and I've customized it. So I've created some custom fields that um, were important to me to, to track. So customer name, customer email, that type of thing. I'm just going to treat this as a finding. Um, now, I, again, I, I spend a little bit more time in the system, so I'm going to create a little bit more fancy details here. Um, but out of the box, for somebody just starting, um, if you click on findings, you can easily, um, we have five different finding types. And opportunity for improvement or recommendation are both excellent examples of how you can include um, some customer feedback or even supplier feedback. Um, and again, I think it's really important as we dive into these to, to consider that metadata and what you're putting into the system is what you're taking out of the system. Um, and again, I think I mentioned previously that oftentimes some of our clients will include products in their um, category section. And so not only can I dive in here and now see that I have a certain customer that's always complaining about a certain product, or maybe that certain product is related to um, a certain supplier, that type of thing. And again, I have full transparency and accountability, and, and suddenly I can really get an idea of what's going on within my organization just by uh, you know, having a couple extra fields in the system that, that maybe you're not tracking through your manual paper process or through SharePoint, or it's not as easy to, to identify those trends uh, that way. Awesome. And uh, another question came in while you're in here, and I think it does relate to what you just talked about, was um, you know, can we create our own data fields in Action Absolutely. Manager? Yes, that's a great question. And that, that's exactly what I was just showing you. So let me see if I can find, I believe I have an example in here. So I, I did just show you some, um, you know, I can create a custom customer name, customer address. Um, I can do things like a drop down box. Um, you know, maybe I, I have a list of products that I want to list here. I can, I can create a, a drop down. Um, I can create a listing of people within my organization. Uh, I can create tick boxes, check boxes. I can create, uh, I can make fields mandatory or not. Um, and again, this is typically included in a more in-depth training for Action Manager. And um, it, I think it's, it's a really helpful tool to be able to take what you currently use, call it your manual form or SharePoint, and, uh, and really integrate it into this new Action Manager system. And that makes the transition and the learning curve for the new system a little bit easier as well. But yes, to, to be, the short answer is yes, we can, and we do quite, quite, um, quite frequently. Okay. And then um, another question was, you know, are all these functions that you went through your demo, 
um, within the base application? And the answer is yes. You know, yeah. I guess the question was sort of, you know, are costs varied and if, if we were to buy the base program, is all of this included? The answer is yes. But if, I don't know yeah. if you want to go ahead and expand upon that, that quick answer of yes. <laughs> Yeah, no. So, and that was that was the main purpose of today. So, you know, myself and I, I have um, one of our sales folks, Colin, is on the line as well, listening today. And and we both do demonstrations, and we can really dive down into what the needs of the organization are. In some cases, it's there's a no cost resolution to that, where it's something as simple as adding custom fields, like like you see here. In other instances, um, we also have other products. So, Entropy, this action manager system is call it the light version. This is really the, the um, out of the box, just take it and run with it. Um, but we also have the compliance module. So it's very similar. So you'll see up here compliance module. It's very similar to Action Manager, but it also has the ability to <clears throat> excuse me, to complete an audit, um, to set audit checklists and questions and protocols, um, to add a scorecard to that so you can actually not only complete an audit within the system, create findings from that audit and, and drive corrective actions, um, but you can score different audits and you can run reports off of that as well, which is another great tool and something that um, a number of our clients really appreciate. So, so typically, I think our two biggest products right now are, are likely compliance with all the audit and protocol information added, uh, and then Action Manager here. But if compliance does include everything that you saw today just with those extras. Um, and then Action Manager is exactly what you saw today. Out of the box, this is the system. Absolutely. And then sort of a follow-up to that is, um, can we create our own report formats? And what are? And I think this is a similar type of question. <coughs> what are the data analytic capabilities of Action Manager? So, all the reports that you showed, you know, can they create their own? And I think the answer is yes. We offer some out of the box, but we do have a report builder as well. Yeah, and so so you have um, you know customer for example I have a customer complaint log. Most any of these though you can actually um, so for example I'm just going to pull one up and show you how you can quickly edit. And so not only do you have the ability to um, to filter and to customize what you're seeing, um, but you can actually come in here and, and change some things just within the system. Um, based off the filters and the stuff that you're seeing. But you can also um, just export this and, and manage through Microsoft uh, Report Builder, which is a, a pretty, pretty friendly, user-friendly application. Um, for those that are familiar with it, it's a, it's a pretty quick pickup. Um, and there's lots of available tools online and things like that. But again, for, from my experience, I typically work pretty closely with clients when, when they do want something really specific. I know Colin's talked to some folks in the past about things with um, you know, format or formulas and, and things like that as well. So there's definitely out of the box, there's a lot of analytics. And, and I would say 90 to 95% of our clients are, are content with exactly the information that we have in here and, and the custom um, abilities within the system. Uh, and then you know, a, a handful of folks would actually like to uh, create a customized report, which I typically help with. Very good. I, I hope that answers that question. I think it absolutely does. Um, and I know there is a question about skinning the software. We can skin the software to um, have you know, the different brand, whether it's a logo, whether it's a color. You know, obviously, you know, changing the name Entropy Software, we've had customers <coughs> rename it all together. <coughs> for their own internal, whatever their internal system is called, they rename it all together. But that is part of the administration um, and or, you know, that you can do when you bring it in. Is that right, Amory? That, that's correct, yeah. So I, I just quickly changed the color up here. I can change the color of, of the information throughout the system. I can change this icon that you have at the top left. Um, and again, I, once, I mean, if you want to get really into it, and some clients do, we can go in here and really change things. So maybe you don't call it a finding. Maybe you call it an event. We can rename that. Um, you know, maybe you don't call it compliance. You call it, you know, QMS. We can we can change. There's a lot of customization and configurability within the system. But um, that's really that. I, I would hold that for another conversation. And happy, I'm more than happy to have that conversation with folks, as I know Colin would uh, would as well. Absolutely. All right. Um, I think I'll take one more. There is a question about cost, and we'll get to that. I don't want that person to think that I haven't seen that. Um, but one final question um, before maybe we get out of the system altogether, and that's um, some of the best functionalities to assess and manage risk. 
Um, you know, so I think you went through a lot of, you know, the the findings and the issues and the events that take place and then the actions that come out of that and, and moving it through from, you know, through to closure. Uh, but I don't know if you have any thoughts on the, any the best functionalities to assess and manage the risk inside Action Manager. So I really think that comes down, and I, you know, bear with me, I think this is going to be unique to each, each individual organization, but I really think that comes down to um, reporting functionality and, and some of the, the key drivers in there. So again, I'm going to come into the finding summary report here. And to be able to come in and pull a report based off of causes, and to be able to see um, you know, a number of, um, let, me, let me just dive in here and let's look at just nonconformances. I can actually report um, by causes. Maybe I only want to look at training related issues and identify and address those, or maybe I want to look at all of them. I can come in here and really start to understand what it is that's, that's, um, that's creating the issues within my organization. So is it resources? Is it communication? Is it an extensive workload? Uh, what's really the, the root cause and the driving factor behind these nonconformances that I'm identifying? Or maybe it's not nonconformances. Maybe it's unrelated and it's customer complaints. Um, you know, in any case, what we're doing is we're, we're taking an event, we're analyzing it, we're, creating a, we're coming up with a root cause, and we're trying to um, drive action to reduce that cause. Um, and so you know, some folks will actually just do it from findings themselves. Some folks will sit down and, and have a, um, a monthly meeting to review all the actions and all the findings together. And some people just report up by pulling a report out of Action Manager and sending it up to senior management and letting them decide and really drive um, the decisions and, and the reactions that way. Well, I just wanted to go through a quick summary here of some of the advantages and benefits that Amory um, talk to you about and showed you, and that is, you know, one, the very low startup cost, um, but it's also your ability to drive actions and tasks to completion in, you know, this really methodical and timely manner. Um, and then finally, it does give your organization a much greater visibility of your management activities. And then in the end, you do have that ability, as Amory was talking a lot about in terms of the reports and the analysis, is the ability to make those tactical and strategic decisions. And that's so important, you know, from the leadership perspective and really throughout the organization, right? It's all about managing up as well as then filtering down and throughout the organization. And that's what Action Manager can do for you. If you have any questions, contact information is there. And uh, thank you, Amory. It was fantastic.